and boom according to that i am live welcome my name is hiko simon this is tokyo tonight i am back in tokyo uh it is indeed finally tokyo tonight not australia in an hour in the future uh, as it has been for the last two weeks it's good to be back in japan uh warmer than i was expecting uh, and uh, actually i don't normally get like hay fever this time of year but my eyes have been a bit itchy so something's up in the arm i i, I completely the two weeks i was away i completely missed the uh, cherry blossoms which was a bit of a shame i went for a run today to see if there was anything left and there was not but um yeah it's not it's not even may yet and it kind of feels like late may temperatures and weather it's uh, lovely but it does make me think is it going to be like crazy hot this summer to which the answer is almost certainly yes it's probably going to rain and whatever but uh yeah it's great to see so many people already rocking in here i'm back on the usual program of um tokyo tonight from 10 30 to 11 30 and then uh djing uh, and actually i haven't had a chance to plug in and play with this thing since i got back so um yeah and i'm, I'm not set up I, I i was catching up in time because i was working uh, all of last week while i was overseas uh i uh yeah i i've not been following news at all and i found uh a lot of weeks i say there's not a lot of topics and i it, uh, i still fill up the whole show this week there are like a lot of topics there's like way more than i was expecting so there's a lot going on um so uh yeah anyway uh great to see so many so i'll see what i can cram in but uh, a lot more topics than i was expecting in fact i still never fully caught up on what was uh, people were talking about on twitter i was just going through my rss feeds but yeah, anyway, we've got uh, DJ Sunnyside up first. Uh, congratulations from Greece. We've got Black Tengu present and correct indeed. We've got Yoni Moy, uh, uh, Nordic. Uh, we normally have a few Nordic representatives, but certainly Yon, uh, Finland made it first. So welcome, uh, Yoni. Good to see you. Lara, welcome back as always. Nice to see you there. Uh, who else we got? Believe in Yourself from Canada. Yes, we've got uh, people from Tokyo, Canada, Finland, uh, all over the place in here. Who else have we got in here? Quint Rankin. Quint Rankin. Good to see you. Tudom. Uh, great to see you, Tudom. Uh, Sadiq, a man from Florida. Wow. Checking in from all over the world. Do appreciate seeing so many people. Oh, and the, the comments just updated. Uh, so, uh, yes, we've got uh, anyone else? We've got Dan H. Glad that you can make it, Dan H. Good to see you. Uh, and uh, that is all that I've got. If you're watching, if you're just lurking, whatever, as always, as I always say, just say hi. It's just nice to see um what have we got here snowstorms in northern greece heading for the beaches in southern greece <laughs> wow that's all happening at the same time it's kind of crazy uh is that aimed at me because um yeah well i was just as i was finding things to talk about so there are a lot of things to talk about we've got good day from Mike goes x nice to that good day right back at you thank you for that uh i guess afternoon and uh morning in other parts of the world but here in japan of course night time uh, it is tough doing this. It makes me. It is actually funny. Like the the one part of the world you cannot watch this show is this country, New Zealand. It's like, uh, and even from Australia, it's a struggle. It made me being in Australia, making the show did make me appreciate um, people who stay up late because you know when when I was in Australia, I had a pretty when I was at home, I had a pretty healthy sort of uh, get up with the sun, you know, go running or surfing or doing something healthy, and then going to sleep. So it was always. Um, uh yeah because of that i i had more of a uh i was going to sleep at like 10 o'clock as well so staying up at 11 o'clock to do the stream i i really felt it uh winters in germany as well wow okay so sorry to hear that cobra stenshi uh, of course i saw the crazy stuff about what was happening in the middle east as well with dubai with those uh rainstorms and everything um i guess what i'll what i'll kick off with is not actually in the topics it might be in the topics you might see if you you um check my Instagram or my Facebook or whatever, or I did actually upload a video today. Um, I took out, I, I went, as soon as I was coming back from Australia, I saw when they announced the uh, One Pro, the, the Insta360 One X4, the newest uh, 360 camera from Insta360. Of course, I've got the uh, X2, so two generations, two years old. Um, and yeah, they announced this X4, and the criteria which I always said that I would cause me to cause me to upgrade that it's got a higher resolution, which means that on a large screen it should look better uh, when you when you chop in and look at a small part of the screen, um, and a bunch of other features I thought were pretty cool. So I, I checked it out, and I uh, pretty much immediately bought the the One X4, and I tried it for the first time today. I uploaded a clip earlier on this channel you might have seen. Just 30 seconds of me running but it's with the full resolution uh, frankly with settings so crazy like 4k output 
um, and high bit rate and, and, and all that sort of stuff. I, I'd never actually edit with that probably. I would probably mostly edit for mobile, but it's just nice to see. Uh, on, on 4K on a full screen, yeah, it looks it looks good. It's starting to look like a, an iPhone sort of video. So uh, I will, I've will. i already had people ask, am I going to do a comparison of that with the X2 that I've owned? I mean, it's clearly going to be, it's already, I can see the colors are better, the lighting is better. Um, uh, the resolution is higher. It's better in, in, in most ways, as you'd hope, two generations later. But I'll do a comparison just for fun. Uh, but for now, I just uploaded a clip just to sort of show off uh, how, how good it, it looks. I'll, I'll grab it for a minute. So the things that made this an instant buy for me and uh, my initial impressions. So this is this is the camera and, and I carry this out running. Um, it is noticeably heavier than the X2. I mean, it's a it's, it's a bigger it does 8K. It's a bigger sensor and everything. Uh, same size sensor, I believe, as the X3 for people who had that. So I don't know if it makes as much sense um, to replace that. Um, but one thing, when you have these 360 cameras of any brand, one big problem is, is that uh, you get even the tiniest scratch on these lenses and it ruins the video quality, uh, which I've done. I, I, I've been out running and hiking and, you know, doing all sorts of stuff in America. And I had some falls where I got some really nasty scratches on both both lenses. And when I sent it out for a lens replacement, um, which costs like 20,000 yen, and I just did this like a month ago, um, they just sent me back a new camera. <laughs> Uh, which I guess is probably probably makes sense, um, and, and that way it was waterproof. So I'd only been using the replacement camera for two months, but um, what I one thing I really do like about these is that it's got these kind of cheap and friendly, but basically it's got like a protective lens, uh, which you put, so the real lens is on the inside of this. Uh, but I tried it out, you can't tell it's using a protective shield at all, and this just means that if these get bumped and scratched up, you can replace them, which I've had to do. And much, much better to replace a plastic shield than to replace the whole camera. And you feel less antsy about like wiping and cleaning it. So that was the first thing that appealed. And the second thing being the 8K. It does get hot, um, but um, that is doesn't bother me because I, I, I use the stick. Um, one thing that I did notice uh, when I was running, uh, it, it's noticeably heavier just carrying like this. Although this is honestly fine, you know, holding it like this, uh, like, it, like instead of a, a, an Olympic pad on. But when, when you extend the selfie stick, which is what I do for running, so you can't really see on the, I guess if I go like this, you can sort of see, and I'm holding it like this, um, that kind of multiplies the feeling of weight. And honestly, I think the, part of the way I screwed up my shoulder was probably from doing this with the lighter earlier version. And I immediately felt with this, oh, I wasn't strong enough to hold this up. Um, so I had to keep switching arms to hold it when I took it out for uh, an, a 10-minute portion of my run. So that's a slight concern. Uh, and I certainly don't want to injure my shoulders or arms or anything doing this, but I do love the videos and it makes it fun. It may, for me, going out running and picking a scenic route that I can take a cool video that sort of shows off Tokyo and I can put some music over that I get to make. This is kind of just a fun process for me. So I do enjoy it. And the fact that this is now good enough quality that it doesn't, I, I did notice with my videos, they look good on mobile, but then I look at it on a full computer screen like this and they'd always look a bit blocky and not quite good and with this they can look good um which is nice i mean I, I i i so love this idea that you can take videos with this and decide the video later on um and then it can frame everything and so on uh intelligently and it can make it look like it's flying as a drone around with you so i'm a, I'm a real fan of these cameras the upgrade to me was a no-brainer uh however um it is heavy that's the main that's the main downside that i see but a lot of the updates were updates that i wanted and updates that i didn't even think of that i think are genius like the lens cap thing um i've already ordered some accessories for it uh 8k though it's massive files um so we'll see how that goes but um yeah yeah i'm really happy so far just one day with it but um yeah uh back into the comments uh Shubis, glad you can make it Shubis, good nice to have our panama representative there in the chat we've got dan h has a comment aimed at me uh, I'd say he expects 50% of uh, their incomes will come from zero low, uh, or low alcohol content drinks. Also, the birth rate is declining. Correlation equals causation. Uh, that's an interesting one. The declining birth rate. There is an overall trend, of course, of Gen Zs or whatever they they call, um, you know, 18 to 30-year-olds nowadays, um, of drinking less. So much so, NHK made a sort of a multi... Because the Japanese government collects a lot of taxes from uh, alcohol taxes, they saw 
um, the, the, the declining sales of alcohol, not just a problem for these huge domestic industries that are important, you know, economically, but also for tax revenue. So NHK was pushing that, you know, campaigns by our government ministries, uh, as well as these companies to encourage young people to discover the joy of getting stoned uh, on, <laughs> on, 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 on quasi-legal uh, drugs. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think Asahi's probably partly just pivoting, realizing that um, they, you know, uh, the profit margins on adding chemicals and sugar to, you know, and carbon, carbonated uh, air into water are probably as good as alcohol. Maybe even it's easier to make. Um, so yeah, there's something as well that, um, you know, I didn't drink a lot, uh, when I was traveling, I was still being conscious. I've got my health checkup this week, so I didn't want to undo all the work. I did a three, three months of sort of, you know, being really careful with what I ate. I didn't want to undo it in Australia. So I do like that there are lots of increasing options for, um, you know, being able to go in and, uh, order in bars and so on, like non-alcoholic alternatives. So maybe it's good that they're just reading fashion, but certainly the fact that, um, elderly, uh, it, given that it's increasingly uh, alcohol consumption is a, is a habit of the elderly, um, that might imply uh, that they're dying out. But at the same time, um, yeah, who knows? I, I, interesting statistic I hadn't heard before. Thank you as always, Dan. You're always good at pulling out things uh, that I'm not aware of myself that, that get me thinking. So I always appreciate that. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got DJ Sunnyside up, pointing out only 10 likes. So I, I can't see the likes at the moment on this interface. So I should, maybe if I open this over here, I can check over to the side, I can see. So now I've got uh, 13 likes. So that is good to see. Um, and uh, yes, did I watch the video of the biker girl you sent me with the comparison? I, I've seen so many uh, X3 and X4 videos. Did I see it, the biker girl? I think I, I remember you sent me something and I'm pretty sure I watched everything. I'm pretty sure I watched it, but it's not coming to me right now what was in it. I've, I, I've been watching so many videos. Um, certainly since I was upgrading from the X2 to the X4, it's a no-brainer. And this is pretty much now what the GoPro was 10 years ago. It's kind of like the default. Most YouTubers I know um, have one. Um, what really surprised me as well with this, a lot of the, these features are the same as the X3, but for me they weren't present on the X2, so they are improvements. The mic was surprisingly good, the sound quality. It's actually at a point where I feel like maybe I could even like vlog while running. Something I've considered, or at least doing like running, explaining my sort of routine and stuff like that. Something I kind of have wanted to do for a while. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, I might even take advantage of the fact that the mic appears to be pretty good, even though, you know, there's uh, the still picks up wind and all of that. Mr. Cordy Chip, glad that you can make it. Time to hit the gym. Uh, yes, indeed. Health checkup this week. Stephen Wheeler. Good to see Stephen Wheeler there in the chat. And uh, kick up the likes, y'all, indeed. No, thank you for leaving a comment. Do appreciate it. Will there be a DJ set tonight? Yes, there will be a DJ set tonight. I've got all the kit. Uh, I, I, I was doing topics right up until the last minute. So I'll need a minute or two to set up. Uh, I'm definitely a bit rusty, but I'm looking forward to it. And since I, I guess I'll use the iPad, actually, since... Um, uh, since, yeah, it's easier to do like uh, searches for requests and stuff like that. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, it is scheduled, DJ Sunny Kerberos she points out, which indeed it is uh, for one hour after this. So yeah. Is there a body mount I could get for the camera? Uh, I, uh, I, I I could attach it to my chest, but then I wouldn't get the selfie effect, the drone effect with it. I, I, I like running around with the selfie stick. So that is what it is. I'll, fi I'll figure something out. Uh, yeah, remember Japan it had an anime with anthropomorphic alcohol types. And one of the uh, voice actors got in trouble for saying women shouldn't drink so much. So yes, all of that. The <laughs> comments I won't repeat here, but uh, yes, indeed. Mr. Cordy Chip is uh, drinking creaming soda milk. Hmm, that sounds interesting. Um, delicious, glad to hear it. Uh, Kochi is uh, number two on alcohol consumption, just behind Okinawa. Wow, I, I thought Okinawa had like this huge margin on alcohol drinking, of course. Down in Okinawa, they don't drink sake. They don't even drink like shochu, the, the, the stronger shochu. They drink awamori. And awamori is just basically like a jet fuel. Um, it, it, it ranges from like 50 to 90 proof. It is rough. Uh, some people attribute it to the uh, living to be uh, 100 and 20 years old down there, but also to the extreme lack of productivity that Okinawa produces. 
uh, the fact that Kochi is number two to Okinawa, that's a that's a statistic. Aaron, glad that you can make it. Our, our moderator has entered the room. Glad to see it. Uh, as expected, news hasn't started yet. Yes, I'm saying hello to everybody. So many beautiful people coming into the chat here. So yes, indeed. And everybody, do what Aaron says. Aaron's always right. Don't neglect the like button. Hit it like it owes you money. Uh, the Linksy Project, good to see you. Maybe a backpack mount for the selfie stick. Yeah, the, the problem is it never looks as good from behind as it in front. I really like... I've kind of got my, my routine down in front. It is what it is. But yeah, yeah, I, I would like to figure out some way to make it uh, less of a health risk. <laughs> um, but there again, it builds up the arms and, and the shoulders at least. I'm trying to figure out, I'm being a bit more conscious uh, since I'm doing rehabilitation on my screwed up shoulder uh, about all of that. So um, yeah, Shubas, congratulations. Haven't had a drink since 1986. No regrets. Glad to hear it. Yeah, yeah, and congratulations are on that. That's what she said. Now I'm wondering what I said. I'm, I'm sure she did. <laughs> oh, I have to watch the show back now and figure out what I what, figure out what she said. But yes, I'm I'm sure it was absolutely accurate. All of that said, there are like a ton of topics. There are a lot of topics. As you, if you've seen my Twitter in the last hour, you're probably on the verge of blocking me. Uh, so, uh, on that note, let's have a look at what we've got. The first topic that we've got, uh, OpenAI has opened up a uh, uh, Tokyo Hub and is adding, I don't know if it's actually released yet, maybe it is already, a GPT-4 model optimized for Japanese. Um, big thing we've talked about, uh, Japanese love AI. It's one of the stories I've actually put up earlier today that there was a, a Stanford University sort of global survey where they looked at user, pe people from various backgrounds of various countries and their attitudes towards AI. Um, the country with people most nervous about AI, the consequences for losing jobs and, and, and disruption to society, Australia. Something like 69, 70% of people there uh, concerned or nervous about uh, AI, whereas uh, Japan, the least nervous, 23%, although other people pointing out also Japan hardly uses AI. And, and of course, uh, the more English, some people said English speaking countries uh, seem more nervous about uh, AI, probably since they're more exposed to it. Although that said, I was just in Australia. I'm not sure I'd say that they really, ah, just kidding. <laughs> Honestly, I, I I was starting to get it does rub, rub, rub off on me. I, I have an Australian mum and I was staying at home with and I was, uh, you know, I, I learned how to speak first in Australia. So I go back there for two weeks and have a couple of, you know, and if I have a drink, uh, yeah, I, I, I start to get a bit twangy, uh, start sounding a bit Australian and people start saying, you don't sound like a Kiwi at all. And I start thinking, oh no. So bringing it back. Um, so yeah, with, uh, with the AI stuff, Japan, uh, I've generally though, um, well, I'll come to this. This is uh, I've deliberately got this thread later on. But Japanese Japan's generally a techno optimistic country when it comes to robots, when it comes to all sorts of things. There's there's theories I've shared before on this. But um, yeah, the the one challenge with, of course, these AI Gen AI models is that they require massive data sets of human language, which it imitates. And of course, there's more English on the internet than there is Japanese. Although Japanese does punch above its weight for the number of Japanese users on the internet. The amount of internet content is way higher per person of, you know, per English speaker than, than there is for English. So Japanese are pretty prolific at getting data onto the internet. Um, but there is less data. And the more data you have, the smarter the AI gets. So Japan both lacks um, highly developed AIs because they're all developed using English language materials. Um, and uh, yeah, and Japanese can't access as easily the ones that are there because they work primarily in English. So the idea, it's been a priority for the Japanese government worried that it might fall behind on this sort of thing uh, to try and fund Japanese sort of domestic players to develop uh, Japanese gen AI. But of course, the other alternative is you get the top AI company in, in the world to come and set up an office in Japan and convert their existing world beating AI into Japanese, which I'm sure is also making, you know, I mean, JetGPT, even when it wasn't very Japanese compatible, still a huge boom in Japan and usually positively seen. So uh, very cool that they're opening up an office in Japan uh, and looking to create localized products. Uh, and a real opportunity for them here, just given that Japanese companies haven't really made a dent. And this might be just be another example where, um, you know, it's going to be people, it's going to be multinationals bringing the technology in that's going to give Japan the most benefit rather than, you know, although, you know, 
you never know. There, there keep being breakthroughs in this by sort of new companies, Mistral, for example, in Europe, and maybe Japan will get its own Mistral. But for now, it's pretty cool to see OpenAI setting up here. So yeah. Um, yes. Was that an ambulance or La Migra? I don't know. I didn't do it. I'm legal. I swear. I, my visa is valid. Uh, but yes, yes. I, 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 main road nearby. So yes, occasionally you get, uh, you do get sirens, uh, La Policia. Although that was definitely an ambulance. I think that was all picked. That was an ambulance. They often go up the road here. So it's a main road. So you often hear all of that. Um, geez, now I'm really curious what I was saying. The squirrels are indeed strong. The squirrels, our squirrels are, are like kung fu fighters. What, what can we say? One story. We're doing well. I see that they've renewed for all mankind. When I was in Australia, I did just binge watch the entire or about half of the last latest season of For All Mankind. And honestly, it was getting stupid, uh, and I was getting irritated by it. And I, I have a theory that I, I feel sad to share. Um, the writing is clearly crap on, um, or you know, it's on a downhill slide into soap opera on For All Mankind, which is disappointing because I so love the premise of the show. But I've also noticed that um, I also get really irritated by the lead actor, Joel Kinnaman. And I could say I shouldn't be angry at the actor because... He's just playing a role that was written for him the way it was obviously written. So, but there again, then I remember I also didn't like him in Altered Carbon, and Altered Carbon was just like For All Mankind. It was a great concept. It was basically Ghost in the Shell. Um, it was a great concept for a TV show that should have been so much better than it was, and I just couldn't get into the protagonist. And it's the same with this. And I, 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 I'm sorry, Joel, but you kind of suck. I can't watch shows that you are starring in, or I, I don't know, maybe you're just a victim of, of going to shows with bad writing. But um, yeah, I'm excited that there's another series of Old Mankind in the hope that it might get better. But I don't know what a fifth season of a TV show ever improved. Uh, but um, yeah, that is a thing. Uh, that is indeed happening. Um, pardon me. My sinuses are a bit blocked tonight, I guess, uh, going outside tonight. Uh, was probably contributing to getting uh yeah then i must be reacting to something at the moment uh or maybe just reacting to coming back to japan and getting out of the plane by the way i haven't even shared thoughts on australia i was in sydney for a week uh slight squirrel chase here i was in sydney for a week and um I've, this is probably the longest i've ever spent in sydney i've ever only ever been there a day or two at a time time being raised in um, victoria near melbourne but not in melbourne sort of southern victoria mornington peninsula beautiful part of the world i was just taught to hate sydney and New South Wales, for no real rational reason, I was just taught that Victoria is better than New South Wales and Melbourne's better than Sydney and you never need to go there. But going there, yeah, you sort of discover it's Los Angeles and Sydney both have a lot of things that really, they're like global, huge, multicultural, uh, commercial cities uh, where you can surf and work on the same day, uh, among other things. They're just, uh, Sydney, I, I was mostly in the central area, but I, I, I loved running there great climate i mean yeah sydney's apart from the fact it's so freaking expensive there and i can barely afford to live anywhere which we're going to come to later on in the topics that i've got for the show a uh, great place to go anyway um so uh they are coming for me yeah i hope not this isn't china i hope not <laughs> can ai pass the jlpt that's a good question i'd be really curious about that um so uh here i figured it Aaron, and you figured out what I said. Just scroll up. Uh, I'm curious. Um, possibly. Okay, now I'm, I am scrolling up, but I can't get too distracted by this. So, um, um, I like it better on front or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I don't know what... <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but I will just continue scrolling down uh, so that we can proceed. I haven't been watching Shogun, although everyone's enjoying it, so I should watch it. Did I eat kangaroo? I've eaten kangaroo before, like in a curry. It's really tough meat and it doesn't taste particularly good. I like gamey meat in general. I've had kangaroo, but it just doesn't taste that good. Why do some? Long time no see. Good to see you there in the chat. Uh, welcome back. Good to see you. Does Sydney have a skid row? It kind of does. Well, one impression of Sydney that I had actually was uh, comparing it to like Seattle. It's not as expensive as Seattle, and it's not as grungy and messy and dangerous as Seattle, but it sort of sits in between Seattle and Tokyo. Like going from Tokyo, everything is more expensive and dirtier, and you can see possibly less safe under certain circumstances. I went there right after the, all the stabbings and stuff happened um, that made the global news. 
So you've got all of that, but it's not quite as bad. Like for the Americans going to uh, Sydney for this work thing, they were all commenting it was cheap, whereas for me it was expensive, but not as expensive as America. So if you're in America, I'd say go check out Sydney. But um, yeah. Yeah, I've got to go check out Skid Row. Great band indeed, says Robert Brooker. And I should go check out Shogun sometime when I have time. Yeah, that might be the next one that I load into my uh, binge watching. Speaking of binge watching, um, I was annoyed when I go to a hotel. I've just spent a week in a hotel and uh, there are always big Samsung TVs and I can't like cast my iPhone uh, movies onto these huge screens in these hotels. So I just, I've gotten to the habit of just watching my, uh, my, my iPad mini instead of the huge TVs, which is probably a good thing. But uh, I don't know what the deal was, but apparently Apple's finally now doing deals with hotel chains to uh, allow them to uh, host uh, AirPlay so that you'd be able to actually cast from iPhones. I guess this isn't a problem if you've got an Android, but it's kind of bothering me, especially I lived for five months basically in a kind of a service department that had all these massive TVs that I couldn't do this in America. So there you go. I do want to watch Fallout. It looks really, really good. Um, so waito san yeah, Shogun. Okay, going to check out Shogun, and yes, I really want to watch Fallout. So, well, you're you're ahead of the curve on all that stuff. Uh, uh, NASA's going to send a, a drone to Saturn, to Titan. Uh, uh, that is awesome. I really wish we could just mass-produce drones and send them, like, every, like space probes and telescopes and send them everywhere. Um, this is kind of cool. I've got a friend who actually goes and uses a uh, plane simulator before, whenever he goes on an international flight. Apparently, there is one out near Haneda. Uh, but apparently one step up, uh, JAL is launching a hotel room with a cockpit room to tap your inner pilot. I don't know what they mean by tap exactly. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Love hotel, love hotel for plane nerds. I mean, why, why, why not? Um, but yeah, there you go. I mean, and I suppose with all these foreign tourists, it's a way that they could uh, charge for uh, extra for tickets and so on. Tokyo Vice, I've heard good things about Tokyo Vice. I'm sort of reluctant. I have read Tokyo Vice, uh, and I've interviewed the author on this channel. So I guess in that regard, I should really watch the series. Uh, I also know, well, I've met, I wouldn't say I know Mr. Edelstein. I've met him a couple of times. He's an interesting character. Um, but yeah, it sounds like the series is really well done. So thank you for the recommendation. I probably should watch it. It feels like like when I go to Australia and I don't eat sushi because it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not the same. But when I actually overcame my own prejudice and i had sushi in australia like the crunchy roll with the grilled onions and avocado and roast beef and stuff yeah it's actually pretty good i mean it's not anything like what i consider to be sushi but as as it is what it is it's quite good and it sounds like actually this uh, tokyo vice is quite um uh quite good and i i think this is actually quite a good um <laughs> This is quite a, a a trustworthy thread for, at least for advice about streaming stuff. I find it's always pretty reliable. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, continuing on. This is just an interesting article. I've, I've posted the link, of course, from my niche about this agency that's getting tons of business from uh, particularly new, new grads, not just new grads, though, who hire a company to... Um, uh, to resign uh, on their behalf to their companies. I, I think this would be like a great drama series. You could have a great TV series. I mean, I think there's enough, um, there, there's gotta be a movie or a TV show or that exists about like people who you pay to go break up with people on behalf of you, which I think also exists in Japan. Very non-confrontational. But um, the whole idea of resignation agency, of course, in Japan, just like every other country, all you have to do is give notice and you can resign. Um, but of course, uh, one, there's a problem in Japan that Japanese companies sometimes pretend like you can't resign. Even one of the examples given here, how somebody tried to quit and they couldn't because of uh, company circumstances. Um, and so they hired this company to do it instead. But you, know, you have to do is give notice. That's all you have to do. Um, but uh, probably other sorts of things as well, just the whole um, anti-confrontation thing. And it's got all these sort of new grads who are told, for example, they would, they'd be able to keep their hair color. But then we're told before the company admission ceremony that they'd have to dye their hair black. And uh, or they wouldn't be allowed to attend the new entrance ceremony, so they quit. But they didn't want to deal with the company anymore, so they hired a resignation agency to, to deliver their resignation, which is kind of sad. That I mean, but there again, this is a generation where you hear, um, and I don't know if this is true or not. This sounds like a sort of a meme type thing, but young people are so anxious about face-to-face -face communication and voice communication that they like par paralyzed from even using phones at work. But there you go, um, resign big business for the resignation agency anyway um so uh does that also have a new book out i didn't know that which surprises me 
Um, what else have we got here? We've got tons of the yen uh, down to near the, the lowest value in 34 years. Certainly the whole time I've been in Japan, the, the lowest it had been before this was like one, lowest being a high number, of course, it was 125 yen to the dollar. Now it's like 154, 155, ridiculous. Um, I converted all of my US dollar savings at 130, thinking it's never going to get any better than this. And, it's, and it feels like it's going to sit here forever or maybe get worse. So uh, record cheap yen, which of course record, uh, although yeah, apparently, well, I keep saying to everybody, come to Japan now, it's like the, the country's on a sale, is never going to be repeated. But what is already happening is one, the air tickets, if you buy an air ticket in America or Australia, everyone's trying to get into Japan. Last month, first time Japan has ever had 3 million tourists come to Japan in a month. So record number of tourists coming to Japan. They're all cramming for a limited number of air tickets. The price of the air tickets is going crazy, plus the cost of the hotels. Not just the fact that there's a high demand, uh, like I say, the highest number of tourists ever to come to Japan in a month from outside of the country, but also um, the um, hotels finding out themselves that they can charge foreign rates and uh, get away with it. So Japanese rapidly being priced out of uh, hotels in Japan as well. So, But as a result of that, uh, people are telling me they were planning to go to Japan, but the cost of hotels and air tickets uh, made it unaffordable for them, even though everything else would be cheap. So that is a shame. But the yen is crazy. And, you know, and I really did feel the pain of it when I was in Australia. First time ever, it's always about 80 uh, yen to, a, to an Australian dollar. But it was one to one. It was 100 yen to a dollar when I was over there, which is easy to do math. But it makes everything feel very, you know, 20, 30 percent more expensive. Um, a, a new law in Japan that SNS companies will be required to swiftly remove defamatory posts on social media. Which sounds reasonable and it's apparently it passed unanimously in parliament uh yeah i wouldn't want to be the person uh responsible for implementing that though because he, you know he, here's a defamatory post uh, there might be questions of fact or reasonable belief like the whole thing about defamation in most countries is um if it is something it's not defamation if you reasonably believe it to be the truth uh you know and, and somebody and you have to have a trial basically to, to arbitrate whether uh, it's true or not, and whether you maliciously said it like falsely or not, and what's defamation. So you're going to have to make really fast calls on a ton. I mean, what percentage of social media is some on the spectrum of defamation? I mean, geez, uh, I tried to be reasonable. Uh, Joel Kinnaman might not like what I just said about him just before. I don't think it was defamation. I just said he sucks as an actor. But, you know, who knows? I mean, <laughs> maybe under this law, he's going to come for me. Um, which, you know, if he's going to take me down with his acting skills, I feel safe. Uh, so, yes. Cobra uh, Tenshi says something clever that I didn't see. You got some way to... Okay, we, we have uh, cockpit jokes uh, ensuing, so I'm going to move on. Dr. Ocho, good to see you there. Yen being so low actually worked in your favor when you visited Japan the last two weeks. I'm glad that you visited Japan, and I'm glad that you got to the benefit of the uh, low yen. So, uh, good for you. Glad to hear it. I encourage you. I hope you did have a wonderful trip indeed. Uh, and uh, wow. Yeah, sounds like trip of a lifetime. First time you, you wanted to come since you were a teenager. G good on you. Uh, glad that you made it, Dr. Ocho. Uh, it's kind of funny, the, the two weeks when uh, you were here, I was out. But uh, yeah, hope you had a really, really great trip. Um, Aaron, rallying the likes. 22 and you have 16 likes. There are, there are 17 likes now. There are five people. Who are they? Who haven't liked? That is okay. I don't. Uh, I do appreciate it. But yes, if you like the show, like. If you don't like the show, like anyway. Just please, just like. Uh, so um, yeah. Uh, restaurant review arguments. Here we come. Yes, indeed. That's another one that in Japan apparently a bunch of doctors, a, a group of sixteen plaintiffs sued Google for nine thousand dollars de defamation damages. This is like in America, they'd be suing Google for like five hundred billion dollars. In Japan, sixteen plaintiffs. Are suing for nine thousand. What? What even is that? That's like that's like you know eight dollars fifty each in defamation for bad wanting uh, bad reviews taken down of their clinics, which, granted, people could post bad reviews for all sorts of you know malicious reasons and they leave it up there. So um, yeah, one sec. I gotta blow my nose. I've just been blocked up since I started the stream. So just give me one second. I'm gonna mute. Oh, that is better. It might just be that since being away for two weeks, maybe the room's just dusty. I don't know. But uh, anyway, um, 
one person's insult is another person's defamation. But yes, it's going to be some company's job to enforce this, and it's going to probably have penalties and everything. So there we go. Um, so uh, does that even cover the lawyer and court fees? In Japan, absolutely not. Uh, in fact, that would probably be the main cost. I mean, basically everybody loses. So um, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do with uh, that law, but that's going to that's going to be a thing. Tsukishi Market, famous of uh, dog-sized rats uh, and, and very various uh, diseases and so on. They, they knocked it down. It's in Higashi Ginza. I used to walk past it on the way to work. Uh, it looks like there's a proposal to a bit. It looks as, this looks a bit like the Gaian renovation project, except uh, they're building it on front of what's basically a toxic industrial waste site. So. This should be an improvement. They're going to build a 50,000 person sports field and uh, looks like they're going to develop the area by the rivers and stuff. Looks like it's actually going to, they're actually going to make it nice. I like new things generally. I like development. I really hope they get the sports stadium right. I can't really see what sort of sports stadium it is, but I hope that they don't build one of these sports stadiums with a massive running track around the side. So if you go there for a soccer game or a rugby game, you can't even see the players because you're too far away. I hope it's a nice, like, compact where you can really see, where you can watch a concert, or you can see a game where you can actually see who's playing. Uh, and I, I, I love this idea. I actually really, really um, running uh, in Tokyo, especially now that it's spring. It's, it's wonderful running along the rivers, but there's no one who's actually sort of realized that these are great places for walking and for recreation. And they just randomly like stop, uh, you know, for, for construction, all sorts of stuff all over the place. Uh, they should just be developing all the riverfront areas to make them areas where people can kayak and where, where people can, you know, run and do all sorts of stuff. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, I, I'm glad to see the sort of development, particularly in the uh, waterfront and river areas and the canals around Tokyo, especially now that they're not quite so stinky and polluted as they used to be. They don't smell good, but they smell a lot better than they used to. So, uh, yes, uh, signs of the future. Uh, world's first recycled diapers go on sale at stores in southwest Japan. Oh, God. And I was thinking to myself, surely they just mean like recycled, you know, diapers made out of recycled paper, not like recycled diapers. But uh, if you click on the, the link, will it show? It does show. Apparently, horizontal recycling, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, they actually go through a, a complicated process to eliminate bacteria and odors. They are literally recycling old people's um, diapers. Oh, in fact, you know what? I I was thinking these are old people's diapers, but they might be young people's diapers. Well, that sounds even worse. Oh, it is for children. Oh, you know what? I just read this and assumed it was for old people and just thought this is like Japan both getting poor and, <laughs> uh, and old at the same time. But it's for young people. But I don't know. How is that a good idea? I mean, I, I guess Captain Planet, that sounds great. But um, yeah, I don't know. This just sounds like side of the times, old and uh, poor. But uh, they're recycling. I don't know. Ooh, 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 ooh. Anyway. Speaking of uh, travel-related uh, hotel experiences, no more cockpit jokes, please. Apparently, apparently, bullet trains are going to offer luxury private rooms, which I guess, given that you know, uh, bullet train tickets, you know, in U.S. currency cost like two dollars fifty now, uh, it makes sense that you try to find ways to sell upscaled experiences that you could uh, make, uh, you could sell at a premium. But uh, I must admit, the idea of private rooms on a bullet train kind of cool right i mean if you're gonna if you're gonna go for like a six hour ride or whatever um yeah i don't know i i i don't know that offer might offer a type of uh hotel experience as well uh certainly if you can afford it no idea what the cost of these are going to be but uh that is a pretty that is a pretty good idea um so uh yeah yeah why not it's the <laughs> although honestly yeah more than a bullet trains have kind of been around since the 1960s. I feel like if it was on a maglev, that might be really interesting. But um, yeah, anyway, that is the thing that is that is happening. Um, uh, can you eat capybara? Asks DJ Sunny Side Up. I, I mean, you can eat anything. Do you want to? Not really. Not really. Um, but there we go. Uh, can you get bed? So I've never heard of, of, of a room or a car and a bullet train. It doesn't really make sense, but uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe we can do that. Uh, some people saying choo-choo there in the comments. So there you go. Um, yes, continuing on. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you know what? Um, 
Dan H asked about this last week, Japan's position on the Palestine conflict in, uh, and on Iran. Um, in fact, I don't think he asked. I think I got sidetracked talking about the, the Palestine conflict and, and asked about Iran. Um, so catching up on the news, it's been interesting. Japan uh, has basically uh, the strongest ties ever, of course, with America, almost no ties with Israel, uh, strong ties with Arab countries, and strong ties separately, of course, with Iran, which is not an Arab country. Um, uh, Iran, Japan was actually allowed by, permitted by the United States, one of the few countries to get a pass to keep buying oil from Iran when uh, the U.S. was sanctioning Iran. Um, so kind of Japan has a special relationship with Iran and uh, with Arab countries. It's long been sort of close to it. And when it comes to the Middle East, it generally supports Arab nation positions on um, uh, Israel conflict-related matters, uh, including it, it supported the uh, the, the, the promotion of the, re, the latest resolution that was vetoed uh, to recognize a Palestinian state, which is still something that Japan is promoting. And when it comes to humanitarian causes, at least, and this is slightly awkward, you know, J Japan is one of the voices that sort of supports you in humanitarian agencies and causes within the UN, and it's, it's continued to sort of do that. So it's kind of in the middle, but kind of leaning towards sympathy for Palestinians and um, sort of seen as a neutral player with I Iran that has been trying to, you know, um softly influence in that regard but uh yeah yeah at the same time when i say it's kind of funny i mean japan is a huge uh sponsor they they, they pay a lot for uh, i believe un uh refugee ag agencies and so on the huge contributors but they don't actually want any refugees themselves the way japan treats refugees itself is kind of a problem you know even though it, it, pay, it, it sends a lot of money for other people to look after the refugees for it so it's kind of a good actor on refugee matters and a terrible actor on refugee matters at the same time. But, you know, interesting uh, dynamic there. Uh, so, yeah, I realize the comments have descended. <laughs> uh, have descended into, um, yes, and I, and I suppose I did curate the topic. So I need to accept at least 2% of the responsibility for that. What can we do? Not related to the last bullet train story. Apparently, a snake was seen on a. <laughs> uh, apparently, a, a forty centimeter snake was seen on a bullet train, and absolutely not related to the last story or any of the the the, the comments currently happening. Uh, I I wanted to post a gif of uh, snakes on a plane uh, since now with the snakes on a train. Apparently, it happened, and uh, that caused a train to be delayed. Normally, when you see, you often see, uh, you'll see jinshin jiko, that means a train hit a person, uh, basically human-related accident. Sometimes you'll see uh, animal-related accidents, and with regards to bullet trains, that's often uh, the train hitting a bear or a boar or something, but a, a snake being loose on the train is a relatively rare and new one, so there we go. Uh, Midi set a goal of uh, increasing renewable or, or, or carbon-free energy by 66 percent uh by 2040 based on 2013 um baseline which sounds wonderful and ambitious but not quite so fancy when you remember 2011 they turned off all the nuclear power plants in japan and switched to just burning like dirty coal basically so basically they could achieve that goal just by turning on all the, all the nuclear power plants again uh which hopefully by 2040 they will have i mean there'll be some improvements but yeah they, they definitely were going to choose 2013 and not 27 uh, 2007 or 8 as the baseline pick one or two years after um the the, the great east japan earthquake and the fukushima disaster not uh 2000 not, not one or two years before it uh so it makes that an easier goal to achieve makes me kind of wonder if yeah are they really serious if they're doing that? 91% um, of uh, foreigners want to keep working in Japan, but weekend is taking toll. Uh, hell yes. Uh, all of that. Uh, I like living here. I'm kind of resigned. It's a nice place to be here. But um, uh, yes, <laughs> snake club indeed. Uh, but um, yeah. You know, it's. It, I've been saying to a lot of people lately, Japan is a place I originally came. A lot of people came to Japan from New Zealand in the late 90s to work for a couple of years and save up a deposit for a house back in New Zealand. Uh, and back in those days, you know, 10% um, of $300,000, $30,000 was enough for a deposit, you know. Um, and you could probably put that much away if you live frugally in about two years. Whereas now house prices in New Zealand are like 10 times that. And, you know, inflation and way, you know, everything else. It's uh, not a place you come to make money anymore. I do like living here, I do, but it, it, it's definitely taking a toll. 
um, you'd love to live in Japan, uh, but make US money. That's the dream. And you know what? With all this sort of, uh, with AI, with all this internet stuff, the, 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 the possibility of doing remote work. The problem is if you are working in Japan, um, Japanese tax, tax man will, or tax person will want to get you. And uh, that will require some form of localization in Japan, which will require, you know, it, it's kind of hard. I, I, I suppose if they ever figure out this digital nomad business, um, that's a pretty good formula for coming in here on US wages, which Japan should want as well, right? They want to make that easier, but they do want to tax you if you do it. So but there again, if you have to pay Japanese tax, maybe not that so bad and maybe it's still as good. So I don't know. There's, there's increasing ways, I guess, to do that, but that is indeed the dream. Uh, so yeah. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Aaron, just have an online shop. I mean, that's one solution. Also, I think, um, you know, lots of people have jobs that you can do. Even my job. I mean, we most of a lot of us did our jobs remotely for two years. So I've proven the theory of that. Although that said, you know, working remotely all the time, I, 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 I like being around people. So that's a downside. But uh, yes, there's all of these things. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, six months a year with this new visa, still a pain in the ass. Yeah, hopefully it'll get better. Hopefully you'll be able to get like two, you know, two year digital nomad visa before too long, but we'll see. Uh, as I mentioned before, three over three million visitors uh, visited Japan for the first, you know, tourists visited Japan, uh, which is the first time ever more than three million have come in a month. So that's a that's a crazy record. Uh, and continuing, uh, uh, of course, bringing tons of money in, but also causing some tensions. Um, I knew lost a battle to uh, over catching salmon in northern Japan. I knew are, are of course the a, a kind of First Nations people in Japan. They 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 lived in Honshu, predating current modern Japanese, which are sometimes referred to as Yamato Japanese. So they're Japanese, but they're sort of uh, they're they're a lot like a sort of um, Inuit people uh, in the Aleutian Islands in Alaska and Siberia. Um, and uh, I see parallels myself. I when I went up to Hokkaido, there's a you know, with the wood carving sort of uh, totems and stuff like that. It looks a lot like uh, Maori culture even. And their, their history is very similar. Even the timeline is similar. It was the same time that Maori were getting colonized in New Zealand in the 19th century is when Japan decided it needed to exert sovereignty over all of Hokkaido. And it basically um, sort of uh, eliminated the language and uh, land ownership and so on of all of these uh, Ainu tribes that have been living up there for, you know, at, at least since before Japanese people sort of moved into those parts of Japan. And uh, as and they were literally forced onto reservations and so on and uh, and sort of uh, Japanicized, I guess you would say, given Japan Japanese names. To the credit, rather than dis rather than discriminate, uh, rather than identify and discriminate, Japan's approach was to assimilate. Um, they said, you you know, now you're all Japanese, just the same as us. And they they did, but the, about at the same time they were trying to eradicate the identity of I I knew. Um, and, and we're very successful at that. But a lot of those tribes, and particularly in the northeast of Hokkaido, where those groups sort of remain the most sort of coherent, they still uh, had like traditions uh, of salmon farming uh, predating colonization. That just like in Australia, just like in New Zealand, um, they claim that, you know, though those rights were not extinguished by colonization. And, and the Japanese governments have uh, sort of uh, informally or traditionally recognized that, at least for ceremonial purposes they could keep fishing in these particular rivers but there were also laws there which were aimed at kind of forcing a bit like killing all the bison in america to force you know uh indians to become de uh, dependent on, on on white people for food um, japanese banned the the harvesting of salmon from rivers um <laughs> which was their, their their primary sort of diet food and uh although they've challenged this saying that you know they 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 they, they traditionally have those rights um, the Japanese court decision recently said that uh, no, those laws were against commercial fishing of salmon were, uh, you know, to preserve salmon stocks and, uh, you know, and, and you didn't have any special rights for those and you can still do traditional like ceremonial fishing if you want to do it. So no. So it's an interesting one. It reads like a story that you'd read in New Zealand and it's, you know, Japan has its own First Nations kind of uh, Okinawa. Okinawa is similar but different because Okinawa sort of has retained its, its political sort of uh, existence whereas i know are very much you know like part of uh japanese hokkaido and have been since last century but or well, two centuries ago now but uh yeah yeah interesting story from my perspective um interesting that uh, the ldp at the same time as kishida was just in america to meet with biden just in case just in case uh, the ldp is also sending taro aso to go and meet with trump which just makes me think did someone like read a description that um, you know? Did they did they read that we need to send someone to go and meet a former national leader 
who is gaff prone, sexist, uh, you know, uh, intolerable to be around and, uh, you know, uh, any volunteers and someone misinterpreted that as a, as a description of the person that they needed to send. And they just sent the person most similar to Trump that Japan has. I mean, Arsenal's probably like Trump without the charisma or fake tam. In fact, I would say if anything, I mean, I actually, I, I've shared before, in moments where he has no power or responsibility whatsoever, I've found likable aspects of Taro Azo. I think he actually has a good sense of humor. And the fact that he dresses like a 1930s, like, like Dick Tracy, he dresses with the hat like a 1930s gangster. Um, there are things about Taro Azo I, I find endearing, but then I remember he's, a, he's in charge of the Ministry of Finance and was once Prime Minister of the country. And I think, yeah, no, that's not good. Um, but it is kind of funny. He probably is the closest thing to Trump that Japan has. And they're sending him over there, I guess, to try to make Trump feel at home and uh, make sure that Japan, I mean, I think what when Trump met Abe, he sort of whispered to Abe, I still remember Pearl Harbor at some point. You know, just really good stuff. So, uh, yeah, American people, I, I don't even care anymore, honestly. <laughs> But uh, it is, uh, when people complaining about um, the, the candidates in the U.S. election being too old, Trump 77, Taro Aso 83, which I think is older than Biden, actually. Although nobody's pretending that Aso is going to be prime minister again, or even that it was right that he was prime minister before. But there you go. Anyway, I thought that was interesting that they're sending him across there. Um, quick look at the comments. Um, I see people chatting to each other. But yes, Waito san, six months seems hardly worth moving for for a job. I sort of agree. Um, and uh, yes, yes, Lara definitely pissed off with the uh, new conditions. Um, they stay in Japan more than six months, don't they? Yeah, yeah. People stay here, I think, just renewing tourist visas and stuff, which is what people have sort of always done. But uh, yes, I think Japan wants taxes. I'm, I'm not sure if that's a thing. This was a really cool story. This was a developer who apparently... Um, this is really cool. When he was like a fifth year of elementary school, he wanted his parents to buy him a computer uh, 35 years ago now. And the parents said uh, they couldn't afford it. They said that they couldn't, um, uh, that they, they, they refused to buy a, a, a computer for him. And, uh, but, he, but he really wanted to do programming. So he would write out basic code on a notepad uh, as an elementary school student. And apparently he found photos of his old notepad uh, from 35 years ago and fed it into the a generative AI Claude 3. Um, which uh, executed the code, which he had written as, a, as an elementary school student in JavaScript. And he watched it turn it into a working program and work as a game and was kind of uh, emotionally moved by it. And uh, that's like so cool. <laughs> and I've, I've had moments of brain exploding moments using Gen AI as well, which is why I am in the 23%. Uh, no, I am, I am, I am in the, the, the majority. So 23% of Japanese are nervous about Gen AI, which is the lowest of all the surveyed countries. I'm in the optimistic category, definitely. Um, but yeah, oh, this is funny. You know how I often joke about how the Izumo um, is this, uh, uh, looks like an aircraft carrier, but J Japan assures everyone it totally isn't. Um, Japan's just launched a second one, uh, same class of boat, called the Kaga. And it is uh, this ship. And it, this is not an aircraft carrier. This is a, a portable helicopter um, and civil defense platform. The idea is that they can put... Uh, hospital helicopters on this to support, um, you know, civil defense and, uh, you know, earthquake emergencies and stuff like that. It's just a total coincidence that Japan bought a fleet of vertical takeoff and landing F-35s just afterwards, <laughs> which they can cover the deck of this thing. And um, China, China, Chinese foreign ministry apparently lost its crap over this, uh, saying that this is once again, Japan is uh, breaking the spirit of its peace constitution. Uh, and is militarizing and must stop this sort of uh, this aggressive uh, militarization activity at once without a single comment about the uh, Ukrainian uh, aircraft carrier which it used in the Kawa Shell company to buy saying that it was going to convert the aircraft carrier into a casino which it then instead of making a casino made it into the the, 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 the first aircraft carrier of China basically Ukrainian uh, rusted out casino <laughs> Uh, so nobody's perfect, China, but yes, it's kind of funny that uh, China's kind of super pissed o over that. Uh, so yes, what's it like living in East Tokyo? I say this as someone who loves East Tokyo. I'm not in the wards that are included in East Tokyo in this, but um, I'm close. And uh, I've lived in Nishikasai, which is definitely East Tokyo. I've lived in Kashiwa, which is uh, greater East Tokyo. It's all part of the ghetto. 
Uh, and so, yeah, if you ask me what it's like living in East Tokyo, it is lovely, but uh, I do think of the Elvis song in the ghetto and, uh, and his mama cried. And, I, and when I think of that, I think of this, the South Park episode where um, whenever you say a line of a song, uh, Eric Carmen has to like uh, sing all the lyrics of the song to get it out of his head. Uh, I'm definitely like that. So there we go. Um, a survey on Japan's most and ill-mannered cities uh, listed out. And uh, it turns out that Osaka, by a long way, considered the, the rudest city in Japan. Um, people saying, look at these decades. We talked about this post last week. Got 120,000 uh, likes and 21,000 reposts. So Japanese not liking decade tourists. So don't be a decade tourist. Um, I'm going to have to excel. This is just from two hours ago. I've got to get through the whole week. I've got three minutes left. No problem. Challenge accepted. Given that most of my week was in the last two hours. Uh, line, another data leak from Line, a second round of administrative guidance, which is just a sternly worded letter. But the next step is criminal, you know, is fines and penalties. So it's a pretty big deal, but there we go. Uh, a contrast here uh, for the cheap yen, you've got um, an American saying, wow, I got to stay at a five-star hotel for just $170 a night. Uh, while Japanese students going to uh, Hawaii on a school trip uh, here packing uh, balls of rice to be able to eat because they can't afford the food there when they travel. Uh, and Japanese commenters in the um, uh, Itai News version of this commenting how, yeah, this is basically, uh, Japan is basically now the position of a developing country. And some foreigners saying, well, they remember when it was the other way around uh, in the 70s and 80s. Uh, but I don't know if it was ever that bad the other way around. But yeah, yeah, it's kind of dramatic times anyway. $170 for a five-star hotel still, still sounds cheap. But uh, congrats to this guy who figured that out. Uh, and yeah, Hawaii is definitely not cheap. The fact that they're buying convenience store onigiri and packing it into their suitcases to take to Hawaii. You get in a lot of trouble for doing that in Australia, by the way. Um, they will, they will. If you bring food into Australia, they'll, they'll like basically, well, they'd send you to Australia, which I suppose uh, <laughs> used to be a punishment. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you broke the law. Welcome in. No, they don't do that anymore. But anyway, um, yeah, more stuff. The record number of tourists. Uh, nobody buying tickets to go and see this party. Don't know why. Um, this is the Stanford thread that I mentioned at the beginning with 13 charts, including uh, Japan, the least uh, AI makes them nervous out of all of these. Uh, Insta360, uh, yeah, baby, got that. Uh, Haneda got through it in five minutes, literally five minutes from, it took longer to get off the plane than it took to get through customs and out to the uh, monorail. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, Qantas was shit. I just got constant cancellations and getting run around and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, the average wage, uh, a graph there talking about how it's crazy, how Americans are getting richer, but there again, are some other, some other people commenting, of course, in America, even if they're getting more money, they're also, you know, more in debt and all this sort of thing at the same time. So Americans not necessarily feeling richer and people who live in Japan probably still feel that have a quality of life that's commensurate with, with doing quite well, even if the, the wages are still 27,955 average wage in Japan, the lowest of all of these countries, but Something to be said for that. Uh, checking when I'm coming back into Japan, uh, that there was a yellow sand warning. Maybe that, I don't know if that's what we're getting right now. Safest countries in the world for travelers. I, I didn't go deeply into this, but apparently on this list, Japan was like not in the top 10. And uh, got it here. Japan made it to 12th pla place, three slots above Brazil. <laughs> I mean, there are countries here which are definitely not safer than Japan. I mean, if they mean nuclear accidents and earthquakes and tsunamis, then yeah, Japan probably not the safest country in the world for travelers. But how, you know, uh, when, I, when I was in Argentina, I remember Brazilian people saying, when you go to Brazil, be careful. Last week, three people died in a sports stadium because of falling bullets from gunfights in the favelas. So, you know, I, so I was asking, so what are you suggesting? I wear a vest everywhere. Um, this seems a little bit miscalibrated, but there you go. Um, oh, I haven't, the, the, I've never seen the Ace Attorney anime before. Uh, it looks ridiculous, but it's kind of cool to see Legal Eagle on YouTube reviewing it with a Japanese lawyer and uh, taking it seriously for a moment. Uh, so that was kind of cool. And a naked person in uh, Shinjuku Station. Um, yeah, not a foreigner, thank heavens. Uh, me in Sydney, Toyota on the moon, and uh, we're up on time. So uh, 
yeah, Brazilian Brazil is not safe. Well, apparently it's only three places are less cheap than uh, less are safe than Japan. So I don't quite know how that works, but what can we do? Eric, I'm glad that you made it. We can now start the um, the after party. Uh, so that is a thing. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah. Lots of incredible booms. Uh, Tommy Tom, glad that you can make it. Uh, oh, Ace Attorney Games. Well, there's an anime that they made, and it was uh, ridiculous. So what can we do? Not clear. Not clear. Uh, he, he seemed happy. He was like guiding people through the gates. Uh, doing his thing. Doing his thing. Feeling the breeze. Uh, so anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the show now. I'm going to take a few minutes to set up the live stream uh, for the after party. Do go and join. Uh, the, the, the link is live. I don't have it handy, but somebody, if you've got the link, put the, put the link in the chat. Um, I think uh, Aaron has the credentials for that, has the, the ability to do that. We have 19 likes. I would appreciate if you have If you like the show, do like it. Thank you for putting the link in the chat there for the after party. South Florida, also not so. <laughs> so everybody promoting their hometowns. Uh, again, action-packed show this week. I uh, hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, hang around for the after party. Otherwise, follow me on Twitter, is, uh, Facebook, all the, all the socials. And uh, I will see you this time next week. If not, I'll see you in a few minutes. Uh, boom. Enjoy. See you soon. Any stream.